Hello, welcome to this Hellion 6 tutorial series. Today we're talking about voice management. So this is polyphony, everything to do with the management of voices and what happens when we've got too many of them. This kind of business. So at the moment, that's a three note polyphonic chord. When I play those notes, see that number three up there? That's number of playing voices. How do we manage all this stuff? It's done in two main places. And the first one is at the program level. And it's in this voice management section of the sound tab. So we go to edit, sound, voice management. If we turn the voice manager on, let's have a look at some of the options that we've got in here. So the voice mode, when we're polyphonic, is dealing with what's going to happen when we run out of voices. Well, the standard polyphony um, in Hallian is 128 voices, so it's not going to happen very often. And in fact, for the purpose of this video, we're going to kind of decrease the interest we have in the features of the program that deal with what we do when we run out of voices because it's so rare. Hallian has so many voices at its disposal that you really, it's, it's, it's your CPU that you, you're limited by. But nevertheless, you know, last note priority means when we run out of voices, what's going to happen? Well, we'll keep the last notes, they're the most important. It also has a second uh, value though, which is when we go into mono mode. So now when I play that three note chord, we only hear one note. Last note priority determines which notes get heard. So if I play C, E, G, the note we hear last is the last note that was played. But if I switch this to low note priority, C, E, G, we only hear the C because that's the low note. If I come down, G, E, C, we hear all three. Each of those have the opposites and they're pretty obvious. And the steel options, again, they're dealing with polyphony. They, they don't really have a value in the monophonic mode. But in that case, when we get to the limit of 128 voices, we'll throw away the quietest ones first. The default is to throw away the oldest ones first. If we go back into polyphonic mode, you have this steel note with lowest amplitude setting over here. So this is basically like program-wide. This is the entire um, sound will we'll be controlled by this whereas the voice mode is a little bit more subtle because you actually break your voices down into groups with this uh, voice groups section and then down here we can say well these sounds in this layer are going to be part of group one and these sounds over here you know the guitar is group one and the drums are group two and the bass is group three and they'll all have different priorities you could for instance specify a little hat group that's going to have their own group number and then with uh, with this exclusive mode here you'd be able to say right well only one note in this group is ever allowed to play at a given time and that's how you get that choke effect with your drums with the exclusive group you've got 32 exclusive groups uh, available to you so lots of flexibility in your sound design but like i say we're not we're not worried too much about the polyphony side of things because it's so vast and so expansive. When we're in mono mode, we also have this concept called re-trigger. So if I switch back to last note priority, I'm gonna play a C and then an octave and then let go of the high note. We don't get any, see I've still got the C2 held down, you can see on the virtual keyboard. If I switch re-trigger on, and do the same thing. Now it comes back to C2. Turn mono back off again so that we can see some of these other values. So this is your master polyphony for the program. I've never set it anything less than 128, but you could. This is how many of this of exactly the same note can be played simultaneously. By default, it doesn't have a value but if you want to specify if you have a, a need to say well I don't want to ever hear more than four C2s at any given time regardless of how many different zones different layers are generating sound you can do that from there never done it 
and min low notes. This is probably the craziest single parameter in the entire application. I actually just don't know what it's for. It says basically you can override your program-wide polyphony levels and say whatever the lowest note is, allow that many of that note to sound regardless of what all the other rules are. Pass, don't understand. This tab over here uh, is all about sustain pedal. I don't have a sustain pedal, so I won't talk about it because I've never used it. But if you want to like individually configure how your sustain pedal works in Hallion, you'll do it from there. So this is voice management at the program level. And we also have the same section within each layer. And can you see in the program, voice management is currently on, but in the layer it's off. So the default rule applies, information filters down. So if the program is set, all filters will in, in, inherently inherit <laughs> from um, the, the parent objects above. But we can explicitly engage voice management for any individual layer by turning it on. And now we can override some of the values from the program if they make sense. One of the values that you can't override because it wouldn't make sense is mono. If program is set to mono and layer is set to poly and I play three notes on the keyboard, you only hear one because program has already specified that mono is king and so there isn't a second note to pass on to the layer below. But things like voice mode priority, if I just engage mono for both of them and make the layer last note pr priority and the program low note priority, then if I play a low C and then an E above, the E was not a low note, it was the last note and it was the layers setting that took precedence. If we swap those over, C, E, we don't hear the E because the layers command of low note priority takes control over the program. Each zone itself also has a voice control section and it's here. This voice group is where we specify which of the 128 voices, voice groups, this particular zone is a part of. So earlier when I was talking about the example of the, the drum kit where you want your closed hat and open hat to, uh, to be part of a group, you'll put those in a voice group. And this is where we specify the group for the individual zones. And then it's at the program level that we specify that that voice group is exclusive. Variation groups, this is to circumvent uh, the machine gun effect. So if you've got a sample that if you play exactly the same sample, like repeatedly, it's gonna sound like a, you know, a machine gun firing. Uh, you can specify any number of different samples to all be part of the same variation group. And as you can see, we've got 16 of these groups available to us. And what Hallion will then do is basically use different sounds each time you hit that key, it won't play exactly the same sample. It'll play one of the variants. Those variants are accessed if you go back up to the program level here, variation groups. So once we enable variation groups, then we can specify whether it's a round robin, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, or random or random exclusive. So the difference between these two at the bottom is that random is genuinely random. It'll re-roll the die each time, whereas random exclusive it will always ensure that a new sample is played, so it will never play the same sample twice. So priority is one of those um, what to do when you run out of voices settings that I don't worry about too much because it never happens. But basically, um, a high priority zone can steal uh, one of the voices from a low priority zone, but not vice versa. And incredibly, there's even a separate um, category, which is hold, which specifies that the zone 
won't steal a voice from a zone of the same priority. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, really narrow stuff. Let's move on. Crazy stuff. Fade out is how long the, uh, the sound takes to fade out when it's been stolen. Key on delay has like a little bit of use actually. If we set this and I press a key on the keyboard, that delay was the key on delay. Uh, you can sync it instead to make it tempo based. And we've got the same concept for release. Press a note, let go of the note. And there's the release kicking in. I'm slightly irritated by release mode because I think it's just too silly. This is which envelope is applied to the release mode of the note when the key is let go. It basically uses different rules for how to play the release samples, whether it uses the note-on's envelope or the note-off's envelope or the note-on's velocity. Note-off trigger. This means the zone is triggered when the key is re released rather than pressed. Level for the for the overall voice, yet another volume control. Okay, that's everything in the trigger tab. And there's some great stuff in there and some silly stuff. Unison is just great. So this is where we can specify a number of voices that will be played for that zone. So if we set this to four, and you need to be careful with your volumes because these things are all summed together. So I'll just turn unison off. That's the volume of the sound. Just brace yourself. No, it's not too bad, but it's louder. If we set a one cent detune and now play our key, that is a flanger. If we turn the detune off, and set a one millisecond delay. That is a comb filter. If I set the number of voices to two, I brought span in to help me with this, and the one millisecond delay, check that out. That's a comb filter. We're basically taking two identical voices, moved one of them forwards in time by one millisecond, and via a process that I'll describe in a video because it's absolutely brilliant and completely fascinating. You get all of these holes being cut in the frequency range. That is a comb filter. When you then add frequency modulation into the mix with detuning, you get awesome flanging. So there are deeply fascinating things to be done with the unison section. As a matter of interest, if we had much longer delay, chorus. Chorus and flanger are almost identical. And the length of delay is one of the primary uh, differences between them. <clears throat> Flangers have very short delays and choruses have longer ones. So really really interesting sonic stuff going on in the unison section lots to learn the distribution dial is all about how the pitches of the various voices are distributed so at zero they're linear and split equally between whatever detune settings you've got uh, as you increase the distribution you turn them into a, a logarithmic effect so you bunch the uh, the the voice divisions together around the, the central frequency and then they get exponentially bigger and in negative values it's the opposite opposite way around you have uh, big gaps initially and then they bunch together on the opposite side of the uh, the exponential curve but it's, it's all about spreading the sound across the the detune amount Oh, there you go. That definitely sounds. There's a there's a, a a more distinct like second tone in there. Ooh. Glad 
applied. This is our portamento settings. Let's set it at a, a reasonable 400 milliseconds. So regardless of which two notes I play, it's always going to take 400 milliseconds to get between them. Two octaves higher. Four, four octaves lower. If we switch to constant speed, that's no longer going to be the case. Let's settle ourselves down on C2. And this is why I said let's settle ourselves down. Because the last note I played was C0. It's taking all that time. It basically, the, the, the rate of portamento is constant. And so if you've got a fairly small gap to bridge, gets there reasonably quickly. If you've got a very big gap to breach, should we go and make a cup of tea? I'll let you know when we're done. Anytime now. So it's 400 milliseconds between each semitone. If I'm gonna I'll <laughs> just make this really tiny, otherwise we'll be here forever. So now from C to D, it was two semitones, about 800 milliseconds. You can sync, self-explanatory. The curve is, that was a linear curve we just heard, but you can set exponential and quantized is the glissando effect. Every time I repress the key, it carries on from where it was, so it remembers the last pitch it was at. And then when you press a new key, it'll say, right, this is where I was, this is where I'm going, let's get it done. You can create glide groups. So as the, the IntelliSense says there, notes glide only to zones of the same glide group. I couldn't say much better than that. So, so if you've got different zones, um, dealing with different sounds in different layers and you don't want them to cross glide then you can specify different glide groups and we've got 32 of them. Uh, use start range is a little tricky this is a feature used in the sample editor so we'll get there eventually but basically um, if you play if you glide from from one zone to another you can get this situation where it sounds unnatural because you're playing the entire sample and you only want to play a portion of it so you can specify this sample start range but let's not worry about it now we're, we're drilling a little bit too deep into functionality that um, we'll cover later and that's it that's voice control so an awful lot of functionality a lot of which I do use and some of which I haven't ever used and some that's just plain bonkers and can't imagine ever using it in my life. Hope to see you next time when we'll tackle the next subject. Thanks very much for watching.